Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2023 Toyota Tacoma, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty trailer brake controller. And we're gonna be doing that in conjunction with the Red Arc Custom Fit Adapter Plug. But before we get into that, why don't we take a minute, check it out and make sure it's gonna be right for you. With these Tacomas being pretty capable vehicles, you know, people use them to tow some fairly large trailers around. And if your trailer has brakes on it, you're gonna need a way to send power to them. That way they'll activate and, and actually help slow you down. And that's where a brake controller like our Red Arc is gonna come into play. Uh, I think this is an excellent fit for the Tacoma. You know, um, if it were me and was looking for a brake controller, definitely wouldn't hesitate to use this one. And um, I say that really because, you know, there's a ton of them out on the market and they work really well and, and everything. But um, on this particular vehicle, it's nice. You got these panels here and you can actually utilize these, these knockouts to mount up the knob to your dash. And so it looks super clean, almost like a factory option, easy to see and easy to get to. So the way these red arcs are gonna work, the main body of the actual brake controller, you can mount up under the dash or you're not gonna see it, won't be in your way at all. And how you control everything is through this knob. And compared to the more traditional style brake controllers like this one here, this is a Takancha P3. It's an awesome, awesome brake controller, but you're not gonna have to deal with this big box. You know, um, a lot of people have probably seen them mounted up here on the dash, somewhere in this area. And with the Tacoma being a, a you know, more of a mid-sized truck. There's not a ton of room in here. So I could see something like this getting annoying, uh, kind of being in your way, especially since you can utilize all this stuff right here and, and mount it up out of your way. This is gonna work with trailers uh, that have up to two axles. So about perfect for what the uh, Tacoma is gonna be able to pull it around, generally speaking. So you should be good there. And it's gonna work with trailers that have electric brakes as well as electric over hydraulic. Uh, one of the, the nice things about this setup is it is a proportional type brake controller. So what that means more or less is your trailer and your truck are gonna stop as one cohesive unit and the trailer is not gonna be wanting to drag the truck or, or you know the truck pull the trailer around, so to speak. And to kind of give you an example on how that works, um, let's say if you're rolling up to a stop sign or something, and you're halfway on the brake, the uh, trailer brakes are, are gonna do the same thing. But on the other hand, if you're going down the highway and say there's an emergency stop ahead or something, you really have to stand on that brake pedal, the trailer's going to respond in the same fashion. So overall, it just makes for a more predictable stopping experience. With the knob, you are actually able to make some adjustments uh, if you need to, so the brake force, um, which is how hard the brakes are gonna come on, all right? Um, so let's say, let's say maybe your trailer's empty and you're going to get it loaded. You probably don't need a bunch of braking power sent back to the trailer, right? Because it's empty and light. You can turn that down to maybe, you know, one or two or three, something like that. And once you get it loaded, it's heavy. Uh, you can dial that up if you need a little bit more help, you know, slow down a little bit faster. You can dial it up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever the case may be. Um, so you can kind of fine tune it for your particular situation, uh, which is nice, you know, if you're going up and down hills or something like that, it's always there for you to use. And it's going to have a manual override as well. And to activate it with the knob here, you just push down on it, all right? And what you can use that for when you do that, it's going to apply just the trailer brakes. So typically um, you'd use that in the event of a sway situation. You know, if you're going down the road, you catch some wind, trailer starts to get away from you, whatever the case may be, um, what you can do is hit that manual override and kind of feather the power up to it. That'll safely slow that trailer down and help get it uh, going behind your truck and riding true again. Something pretty neat too, this is gonna have what's called the park brake feature. And so say if you're at a stoplight or something, for longer than three seconds, the brake controller recognize that and actually apply the trailer brakes in 
uh, an intelligent manner to where it'll help determine, do I need all this power sent back here? Do I need half the power or no power at all? That's pretty cool that it's set up like that. That way you're not, you know, essentially locking down your trailer brakes when you don't need to. So it should help extend the life of your trailer brakes as well. So uh, just something neat that I, I'm glad to see they kind of thought about and threw that in there. So at the end of the day, an excellent choice as far as brake controllers go for the Tacoma. You know, it's a great fit and it even installs very easily. Um, with these particular trucks, there's a plug underneath the dash right there from the factory. You plug a, a connector plug into it, plug it into the brake controller, mount it up, and with these knockout panels, you push one of the panels out, put the new one in, that's really all there is to it. So it doesn't really get much more simple uh, in terms of brake controllers to, to get this one installed. So why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're first going to need to find our factory connector plug. That way we can hook our adapter up. And uh, with the Tacoma, it should be located on the driver's side behind this kick panel here. To get the kick panel removed, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna have this threshold piece on the door sill. And with these, they're just snapped into place. So you can kind of just grab them, pop them up out of position. We'll get that out of our way. And then on the kick panel, there's a little plastic nut you can unscrew, which I'll show you in a second here once I get this off, cause it's kind of tight, but that's it. You know, nothing really to it there. Um, and the panel essentially just kind of unsnaps. This is where that nut was. So we'll set that off to the side and now we can uh, check our wiring and find that plug. I was able to locate that connector plug, pulled it out here. And that's what we're looking for. It was kind of just tucked up like that. Once we have it located, you can actually take the adapter that'll plug right into it. You can't really mess it up, you know, it only go in one way. So we'll snap that in. And then on the uh, other end of our adapter, we're going to have a white wire with the ring terminal attached to it. That's going to be a ground. We have a factory ground right here, and that should work perfect for our situation. And so that bolt, I'm gonna pull that out with a 10 millimeter socket. That bolt out, <clears throat> you can take your wire and I just kind of ran it behind our factory wiring. That way when we put our kick panel back up, it's not gonna get pinched or anything. So take the bolt, place it through the end of that ring terminal. And then we'll just tighten it back down. I just have a angle bracket here and use some nuts and bolts to secure the brake controller to it. And there's actually a bracket up under the dash with a bolt in it that I'm going to use to bolt this to. Um, I'll get that done and, and show you where it's at and, and what it looks like and everything. But um, before we do that, what, what I like to do, so we're not trying to do this underneath the dash, is just plug our connections in. So you'll have one end, plugs in like that. And then of course the other end plugs in. I'm gonna use the 90 degree uh, connector on this side. It snaps in, nothing to it. So I'll get this uh, bolted up and show you what it looks like. Here's how our brake controllers set up. So, like I said, there's a factory stud, this one right here, that's kind of supporting this fuse block. So just remove that nut with the 10 millimeter, pulled back on this plastic to draw it past the stud. And then I took our bracket, slid that over the stud, put the fuse block uh, piece back over it, and then tightened that bolt back down. It's really secure, not going anywhere. Brake controller's in a good fixed position there. So just how you want it. And then the wiring, you know, I just kind of tucked up uh, and kind of put it all here with the rest of the wires that'll be behind our kick panel. 
As far as getting our adjustment knob mounted up, we're gonna utilize one of these knockout panels here on our dash. And so if you reach your hand way up behind the dash here, you can kind of pinch the tabs. Those there, so when I reached up, I squeezed those down and pushed out. And uh, I'll set this off to the side. Then I'll take the other end of the cable, run that up and get it pushed through that opening there. I'm going to be using this Red Arc replacement knockout panel, which is really nice. It sets it up for you essentially and uh, makes everything super easy. So with your switch, that's going to line in, line up perfectly there. And you'll take this nut. Make sure this is going on straight because the threads on the switch, you know, everything's just really fine. So you don't want to cross thread anything. Get that hand tight and then I'll usually take a 12 millimeter socket and just barely snug it up. Don't want to over tighten it. Then you take the knob and you want to dial that as far as it'll go counterclockwise. All right. And then take this piece and the zero, you want to be facing straight up and down. So about like that, push it into place there. Everything feels good. Then we can plug this right in. Make sure you got it up in the right position. That essentially should slide into place and snap right in. Just push down on it. You can see that blue light illuminating. So we, we know we're getting power and everything. We'll still have to calibrate it and whatnot, but since we know it's powered up, chances are really good we're in good shape. And what I'll do now is just secure up any of the loose wiring and get our panels reinstalled the opposite way that we removed them. Here is the finished product. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I used some zip ties to kind of secure our wiring up and out of the way. And whenever you're doing this, you know, just be conscious of any moving parts down here. You know, steer clear the, the uh, brake pedal arm and your steering column and things like that. Really the only thing left to do now is calibrate and test our brake controller. So uh, I plugged into a test box, which is simulating a trailer. Um, you can always use your trailer or you don't even really have to be hooked up to a trailer to be honest. But when you do plug in, you should see, um, you know, this flashing from green to blue. And that means it needs to be calibrated and you don't really have to do anything special. Like I said, you can be unhooked or hooked up. So I drove around, did a few stopping sequences and got our controller calibrated. As you can see, the light is steady blue now. So we're in good shape there and a couple of tests that we can do real quick. So I'm still plugged into my test box, simulating that trailer. You can hit your manual override. You can see that light is illuminating red, so we're getting power sent back there. And if I push down on my brake pedal, it's sending power back as well. With that all done though, that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty trailer brake controller on our 2023 Toyota Tacoma.